So anyway, uh, this is nothing to belabor, you know, uh, but at the same time, I did want to introduce this, this idea that people do give for different reasons. We meet people where they are. And it's up to kind of up to us kind of to help us. Hopefully we can prove what we learn, we can better meet the people where, where they are. Uh, if you only take one thing away, take this away. Fundraising, successful fundraising, is both institutionally driven and it is donor driven. Okay? Fundraising. Institutionally driven and donor driven. I majored in business at Ole Miss. And, I rem and for the few classes I went to, I remember this. Uh, <laughs> I had a blast. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's the economics grid. You have money, quantity, you have demand, and supply. And that point in the middle was profit maximization. There are two dynamics that go into profit maximization, and there is demand, and there is supply. Okay? And then I moved into philanthropy, and I thought, there is a similar dynamic that's, that's occurring within, within philanthropy. There is an institutionally driven dynamic, and there is a donor driven dynamic. And that point in the middle is philanthropic maximization, okay? And I want to, to break this down. What dynamic in our world, in our work life, helps us plot the institutionally driven Dynamic. And I, I, I'm going to suggest that that is, is, is most clearly focused around your strategic plan. Okay? Okay? And let's break this down. Within your strategic plan, you're going to involve yourself in these kind of dynamics. You're going to first relook at your mission. The mission is your is the heart of your organization. It is your raison d'etre. It is your reason for being. Okay. Now, in the strategic planning process, you relook at your mission and you ask yourselves, is this still us? Because nonprofit organizations have a life. First the seed then the blade, then the flower, they, you grow and you change uh, and you, you kind of add different things. A lot of uh, human uh, services start out as a, you know, a, a place of children's home and then you expand into maybe developmental disabilities and you know you have this expansion of purpose in higher ed you expand maybe from a college to a university, you know, and you and you add courses and things like that. You grow from being K three junior high, you know, or adding a high school. A lot of times, there's that evolutionary growth. So, a, a, a mission statement is is like a short, very com, you know, maybe two three sentences that 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 crystallizes who you are. That's 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 the mission statement. So you first ask. Is this still us? Is this mission statement still um, a true reflection of, of what we do and what we're about? Okay. So that's the first step. Then you have your vision statement.
a vision statement is 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 teleological. Um, it is it is out there. It is if this is who we are, this is where we're going. What is our goal? What is our end point? What is our, our purpose? Now, if you think this is hard, this is not nearly as hard, you know, because you can kind of redefine who you are through some wordcraft, wordsmithing. But there are a million different directions any organization can go. Which one will be your path? Okay. And uh, so the vision statement is where you get into some politics, you know, because everybody's going to have, you know, kind of different vested interests in our direction. Uh, but it is important that you not only know who you are, it's important to know where you're, where you're going. Uh, it may, may be that where you're going is in a direction of expanding your, your spectrum of, of purpose. Um, I would imagine Good Samaritan, you know, maybe has, has had a, a little bit of that from just feeding people maybe to expanding the, the expanse of things. <clears throat> so, uh, so this is who we are, this is where, where we're going. Um, and, and I, I would throw out this suggestion that your vision statement is not something like we're going to bring in the kingdom of God. Don't make it so big. Don't make it so expansive. Make it such that your vision statement is such that you will know when you're there. Make it in some ways measurable. It may be that your vision statement is, we want to be the biggest in what we do in this community. And you can metric your way to being the biggest in what you do in your community. You know? So, so make it in some way, shape, or form. I'm suggesting, you know, make it some way, shape, or form uh, a measurable kind of a thing. I can remember, uh, this was really funny, uh, I sat by this guy at a church deal and he was talking about the United Nations Association. He was a Princeton man. I, I loved him. Dear man. Dear son. And he said, he showed me his card, United Nations Association member. And then I, I looked it up. This was before Google. You know, I went through the paper. And I found out that the, the next week there was going to be an Atlanta chapter meeting with the United Nations Association. So I went to just a lunch, and I walked in, and there was a room full of, uh, I think their best would be best expressed as maybe Eleanor Roosevelt liberals, you know, white hair, you know, because it was that generation that birthed, you know, the, the United Nations. And so uh, I went in, and immediately uh, they just kind of flopped to me because I had a heartbeat that was strong, and I was a fundraiser. Well, the next thing I know, I'm president of the Atlanta chapter. <laughs> you, know, you couldn't and, leave that. And, yeah, that, that's right. I didn't have a chance. And so they made me president, and then they changed the bylaws such that uh, a, a, an Atlanta president is on the national board. So, I mean, this is early 90s, so I'm up there on the national board with Ted Turner, Cyrus Vance, Elliot Richardson, I met Boutrous, Boutrous Dolly. You know, it was a heady New York spin, and I was up there. So the only thing I could contribute is I had some nonprofit knowledge. Um, so anyway, they went through a strategic planning process. And, you know, what is our mission? Uh, we are to educate the public about the benefits of being a part of the United Nations. Okay. And then we started talking the vision. And this great man, dear man, John Whitehead. Uh, so anyway, he's the chair of the board, and he says, what's our mission? And he said, well, I think world peace 
should be our mission. And only somebody from Goldman Sachs could have had that kind of a wide of a, of a view of things. Because, humble me, I was thinking, world peace, I'm thinking, that's more than our $5 million budget can afford. <laughs> I think that may be a little bit too, too out there. And, and, and I think we would have probably been better served if we had have said, we want to become the largest foreign policy membership organization in the United States. Now that is something that we could metric our way to, grow to, actualize. I would suggest that that would have been a better vision statement for us than world peace. Am I to argue with Goldman Sachs? You know, so what our vision statement was? It was world peace. <laughs> so anyway, we got who we are. We got where we're going. Okay. So now we start talking of goals or objectives. That's what we start talking about. Some of those terms are interchangeable, but typically we use goals referring to dollar amounts, objectives may be, may, may be more programmatic in their orientation, but we do set goals and objectives moving from where we are to where we're going. And they can be short term, intermediate term, and long term these goals and objectives. Short term is within the calendar year. I would suggest intermediate term is from two to five years. And I would say long term is five plus years. Okay? It's kind of how it, it shapes. Now, your results and, you know, your metrics may be different, but, you know, for purposes of explanation. Now, it may be within year one, you may have some programmatic objectives. We want to add this, or we want to expand this in year one, okay? But when it comes to, and, and this would be a strategy. We have a strategy to to meet a programmatic objective, you know, it's kind of a how-to. And then we have philanthropic goals. And our strategy in, in our world, this strategy is called annual giving. That's our strategy to hit a, a monetary goal to fund philanthropy, okay? Now, then we have an intermediate term. What can be done in two to five years? A lot of times, that's the kind of range of years you need, time you need, to maybe, for instance, build a building. You can't do that in one year. You have to plan and, and to build that building, okay? And there is an intermediate term strategy that we use and it's called capital campaigns okay and you know there's more than you know it is a huge number that you, you're just not going to be able to raise in one year but it's a huge number that can raise uh, major gifts to fund this bill okay And then we have long-term goals. And it may be that our, our, our goal is to build an endowment. Now this is not in one year and, and maybe not in two to five years, but we want to, to fund a program 
whose derivative un income of this corpus can, can fund a program. It may be for scholarships, for students, it may be for academic programs to, to augment them, okay? But that's the beauty of, of having an endowment. What do, do endowments do? They institutionalize programs. Okay, they institutional, they help institutionalize a program. That's what endowments do. And we have in our world a, a, a strategy to help fulfill that goal, and that strategy is legacy giving. Okay? Most of that money is found in death time transfers. Probably about 90% of that money is found in a will or a life insurance policy. It is a death time transfer. Okay? Um, now, <clears throat> This is, this is me trying to, to help you kind of find a place and a term for planned giving. Because we have annual giving, capital giving, legacy giving. Where does planned giving come through? For me, planned giving, the best definition I've ever heard is that planned giving is a tax-wise way of giving that typically involves three people institution, the donor, and a lawyer. The institution, a donor, and a broker. An institution, uh, a, a law, you know, a, the donor, and a, a life insurance person. Typically, you have to have kind of three, three people. And uh, plan giving, tax-wise ways of giving, can be used to help you meet your annual giving goal. Plan giving can be used to help you use meet your capital giving goals, and plan giving, big one here, can be because of the tech debt dot transfer can be used to help you meet your legacy gift goals. Okay, so these are the strategic planning dynamics at play. In strategic planning, we come to a clearer sense of who we are, where we're going, how we're going to, how we're going to get there, and what we do through here. Use a theological term. Incarnates. If we hit our short-term, intermediate-term, and long-term goals, we are going to incarnate our vision. We're going to, we're going to embody that vision. We're going to give it form and definition. Okay? So that's who we are, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. We have an institutionally driven dynamic. We, this, that is who we are, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. Now, we are all representatives, are we not, of the institution? And we need to be communicating to our donor constituency who we are, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. That's what the sophisticated donor wants to know. Okay. All right. Now, then there's the donor-driven dynamic. Now, what helps us plot the donor-driven dynamic. If strategic plans help us plot the institutionally driven dynamic, what I'm going to suggest is that the donor driven dynamic is, is plotted by such dynamics as the feasibility study. Okay? And we have a sense of when we go out to our donors that with a feasibility study is the spirit is prospective donor. This communicates the best foot forward of our institution. G perspective donor, what do you think? And there is this, you know, um, um, and they will tell you what's hot and what's not about who you are, where you're going, and how you're going to get there. So it, it involves people. 
um, you know, in that discussion. Now, I love history, <coughs> and uh, and so uh, we in the United States have been at this philanthropic game longer than anybody, and historians would say the dynamic started around 1900, and it was a dynamic straight out of New York City, where there were manufacturing, let's say, people making irons. And then across the street, there was Madison Avenue that told people why they needed, you know, to have an iron. You know. So it was a straight out of, <coughs> out of, out of uh, New York City. So uh, communication at that point in time was one way direction. You need this iron to make your life better. Academicians will tell you that one way communication is marketing. It is one way. Around World War II, a shift happened where it not just became one directional, but a two way conversation. Now, how can we make this iron better? You know, tell me ways we can make it better. It was a two-way directional. Now, that dynamic, academicians will say, is a public relations dynamic. It is a two-way street. It's not one-way marketing. It is public relations. There is give and take. There is communication. What we do... We are really, in this sense, not involved in the marketing undertaking. Our world is the public relations two-way street. And we represent the institution to the donor. And folks, we also represent the donor's interest to the organization. If you ever wonder why you're going home stressed, you know, or, or a little bit, uh, you know, schizophrenic is because you have one foot in each world representing the institution to the donor and the donor's interest back to the institution. Okay, so that's that that that's the gig that that, that we're in. Okay, the feasibility study is is a dynamic that helps us plot the donor-driven axis, and then. It may be that um, between these two dynamics you're going to have philanthropic maximization just because you listen. Okay. Now we're, going to, we're going to drill down into more detail when we get to capital campaigns and feasibility studies because there is some more detail down there. But I just wanted to set your mental file such that you know that you're involved and your career is within this universe, okay?